All right, I think we are live. Let me know if you can hear me. I think there's a little bit of a lag in the stream, but I hope the lag is not too much. And let me know if you can hear me. And um, I'm behind my table already and I have my phone next to me to read comments. Okay, there are people in the in the stream already. Okay, I'm going to try to uh, to pr to pronounce all your names, but I think I will slaughter most of them. Okay, so Ma Maslana is in the stream. Hi, Sophia is in the stream. Ra Ryzen, I hope I'm saying that right. Christie's. Okay, okay, so you guys can hear me. Okay, good. Susan is there, Michelle, so I just wanted to try out a little stream, it's been quite long since I last streamed, I checked and it was one year ago, so the last time I streamed was on the 4th of June 2020, so it's been a while, but I really wanted to stream again and do some, um, some live drawings. So I'll wait for a little bit for everyone to come in and then I'm getting started. So it will be um, a whole drawing or demonstration from start to end. So I have nothing on my paper. It's just my pastel mat and my pencils and I'll explain a little bit about my materials as well. So on the screen you can see the reference as well. So you can draw along with me if you want. Oh, Darren is there. Hi. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> oh, Linda and Shady and Zay Artisan. Oh, I'm going to pronounce all your names wrong. I am Crazy Potato is there as well. Yay. Okay, I'll do a little check. See if the... Um, if the video is all right as well. Okay. I think everything's working. So that's good. So I was a little early, so just take your time to get your pencils. If you're drawing along with me, let me know who is drawing along and who is just watching. Feel free to just watch. Hi, Stefani. I hope I'll be able to go live on a regular basis again. I'm not sure if I will manage every week, but at least every month I will do a live stream or that's the plan um, because I really like it. And I want to bring some life back into my YouTube channel again. Okay, so we're doing a dog eye. We'll be doing a dog eye today from start to finish in gray tones. So let's just talk through my pencils a little bit. So here I have a Faber-Castell pit. It's a white one. And I'm only using the white pit because my white stabilo is acting a little weird. So it's uh, breaking all the time. So I didn't want that. So I just got my white Faber-Castell pit. And then um, the rest of my pencils are all stabilos. So this is 110, a very light gray. Then I have 722, slightly darker. Then 724, which is slightly darker again. It's like a medium gray. And then I have a darker gray, 726. And then the final one is black. So just gray tones, and that's a really good way to get started with pastel pencils if you're on a low budget or if you don't know where to start. And then the surface is pastel matte and it's the color dark gray. It's about, I would say it's about eight by 10 inches, maybe seven by nine, not sure. It's not that large and the drawing itself is not going to be too large either. I just want to draw a little eye and maybe a little bit of the fur around and in the meantime, I'm also looking at the comments and answer questions. So you can answer your questions during the drawing as well. I'll be looking over once every few minutes to check the chat. 
let's see if there are more people already. Shreya, Mafi, Henna. All your names are very hard. All right. So I hope to finish the drawing itself in about one hour, but maybe the stream in total will take about one and a half hours if I'm taking my time to explain everything. So I'm just going to take it easy. And of course, the stream will be available on my channel after it ends, so you will be able to watch it back or uh, do the drawing later and just watch for now if you want that. Oh, and by the way, for sharpening, I use my Faber-Castell Color Grip Sharpener, which I really like. And then I also have a kneaded eraser, which I probably won't use. I don't like to erase when I'm doing pastel drawings, but just in case. I have my kneaded eraser with me as well. How all you are doing? How are you all doing? I switched the words. I hope you all are fine. It's finally summer here in Holland. So today was a pretty warm day, very sunny day, which I really like. And by the way, this is my first stream in my new house as well. So I moved in uh, February. So this is the first stream here. And this house is way better than my previous one. I didn't stream that much in my previous apartment because I um, I got interrupted all the time by my fighting neighbors. So I didn't like filming there. I didn't like streaming there. Now I live in a much quieter place with no fighting neighbors. So maybe here I'll find a little bit more you know, rest and time to stream. So, um, this place is much better. Alright, so I think I'm just going to get started. Chris is there. Alright. <laughs> I am Crazy Potato says, I have homeworks, but I'm too excited for this stream. Maybe you can do both at the same time. Just watch and then also do your homework. If you have any questions, by the way, about my materials or about drawing in general, just let me know in the chat and I'll answer them. Hi from Denmark, says Charlotte. Hi from Germany. Where are you are from? Switching the words again. Where are you all from? If I haven't talked English in a few days, I, I lose it, so I have to practice every day. Romania, Germany. Hi, Tony. N another Romania? Cool. Germany as well. England. I'll probably not have any of my American followers. Oh, yeah. One. New York, Canada. Munich, Cam Canada. Again, okay, cool. So the time difference is pretty, uh, pretty annoying because it's hard to find a time that's good for everyone. Another one from Canada, says Michelle. Azerbaijan. Really cool. Oh, happy birthday, one to three rock fan. Cool. Kentucky, USA. Oh, hi, Madelon. Another Dutchie. Okay, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to uh, draw, explain, and read the comments at the same time. So it's a bit of a, mul of a multitasking. If you're drawing along, make sure your pencils are sharpened. And then I'm going to start with a sketch. So this um, pastel mat is dark gray. So what I like to do is do the sketch with a color that's slightly lighter. So that would be the 724. I decided to go for all cool gray tones because I prefer cool grays over warm grays. I just like the look of them more. So that's why I went for cool grays but you'll be able to do the same drawing with warm grays as well. It's just based on your own preference. From Idaho, Munich, Wales, United States, 
Germany. Yay, lots of people. All right, so for this sketch, I am going to start out by mapping out the size of my eye. So what I like to do first is put down some lines of the very left of the eye, the outer corner and the inner corner. So first imagine where you want the eye to be on the paper and how large you want, you want it to be. So I feel this would be about the size of my eye. I don't want to make it too large. And then you can see that the outer corner is a little higher than the inner corner. So I'm also going to keep that in mind. And then I can basically follow the top. Top line of the eye goes up. And then it comes down quite vertically. And I'm sketching with a very light hand. I hope you can see it on screen. I'll be going over with the darker colors, of course, so then you'll be able to see better. But the sketch, I just want to leave as light as possible. And then going down. Oh, hi from Italy. Hi. So don't hesitate to answer your or to ask your questions. Okay, so you can see that the inner corner of the eye is a little bit more out towards the right. And then we can follow the bottom line. So this eye is quite round. It's really important to look at the shapes and not just draw a dog eye as a human eye because the shapes are very different. All right. And I can just go over my lines a couple of times and adjust them a little bit until I'm happy with the shape of it. Um, what sharpener do I use? It's this one, Faber-Castell Color Grip. It's a gray thingy, a bit of a tri triangular shape with three holes in it. And I really like it. I've been using it for a couple of years for all my pencils and I'm still really... Uh, Enjoying this one. Hi, Marilia. From Madeira Island. Okay. So I'm just taking my time for the overall shape of it. I'm trying to hold my pencil as close to the end as possible. So not right here, because then you get a lot of pressure on the pen pencil. And you don't want that. You want a light, light pressure on the paper. Otherwise, it's hard to correct your wrong shapes. Okay, so I like this size and I like the shape. Um, I am Crazy Potato in the description of the stream, like the video description. I've placed all my uh, materials and the brands so you can find the materials there and also the reference photo. Then this is actually the top of the eyelid. So the eyeball, it starts a little below that. So I'm placing that eyeball within the shape that I drew. Keep looking. And 
and then that's basically it. I want to keep my sketch as basic as possible. Otherwise, I just get confused by all the different lines. So I like to keep sketches very simple. Then we also have a very light highlight at the top. So what I'm doing is looking at the basic shape of the highlight, not at all the dark thingies and lines and details in there. I'm looking at the basic shape and drawing that in a little bit. Like that. We really want to get in that reflection, that nice wetness in the eye. So not everything has to be a photocopy of the reference photo, but I do want to get in that texture and the contrast in the eye. All right. So then we have the pupil that's somewhere in the center and this highlight is overlapping the pupil a little bit as well. The pupil is round. So I'm drawing that in round, although you can't see all of it. Because we're looking at the eye from an angle. So this is not from the front. We're looking at the head from the side. So that means that the pupil is not round. It's more like an oval like this. Hi, art lovers. Mike asks, how do you manage to be able to add every bit of detail to the piece? It's just patience and a lot of layering. So I'm not sure how detailed I can make this one within about one hour. But if I want to do really detailed pastel pieces, I have to start off very light with very light layers and then keep adding more details on top and it just takes a lot of hours and a lot of patience. All right, so this is my sketch. Oh, we also have um, the eyelid. So you can see a dark eyelid and then the fur comes. This is the bottom eyelid and then the top one slightly above the lines that I drew. Trying to be loose with it, not think about it too much. And then here we have the, a piece of skin as well in the inner corner of the eye. And here there is some like goo, some wet eye goo. One to three rock fan says, I've been doing a lot of dog commissions lately, but I always tend to get bad reference photos. Yeah, that's the thing with, with them um, doing commissions. You can decline your photos. If you really can't work from them, you can decline them. I always see it as a nice challenge, but if there's so little detail in the photo that you can't see any of the dog's character or expression, then I would um, ask for new photos or decline the commission. Quite a lot of watchers already. I had no idea how many people would join because it's been so long. Okay, so this is my sketch ready. So very quick, very simple. I don't want to make it any more complicated than this. Now, what I like to do is put in all my darks already and all my lights. So what I like to do is get in with black right away and outline all the areas that are super dark in the picture, which are not a lot, actually. There's not a lot of black in this one, but I do like to get in my darks first. So I have my black here, that's number 750. And what I'm going to do is look a little bit more closely at the shape of the eye and outline 
the top of it, the area just underneath the top eyelid. So try to not depend on your sketch lines too much. I just use my sketch lines as a guide, but I'm still looking at the reference all the time to make sure that I'm still going in the right direction. So this is all very dark, all very dark. And then we have this whole dark area against the iris. which I like to line out before I start with the eye itself. Just so I like to get in all the areas around the eye first. Make sure to get my contrast in and then fill in the eyeball. So this is all very dark, so this I can fill in black. Fill that in nice and tight. Hi Sophie. Hi Alex. I hope I'm saying that right. Yes, I'm using Stabilo Carbothellos and a white pit pencil. So the white one is from Faber Castell. Then the bottom. It's a little bit different because we have a very bright highlight, as you can see, along the bottom of the eye. So we have to be a little bit careful with that. Don't see a lot of black either, so I'm going below. So this is the line below the highlight, filling that in with black, but not so heavy. So I'm doing a light line. And then going above that highlight. So I'm basically going to leave the space where that highlight is, leaving that space open so I can go in with a lighter pencil and make that nice and light. Hi, Alona. So how is the pandemic situation in your area? So we are just out of lockdown from starting from today, I, th I think. We have been in lockdown for many months and now we're finally out of it, but it's took a long time. Luckily, everyone in my family has not gotten sick, so that's good. Okay, so here we have the outline. Then let's go in and fill in that pupil. Lightly. Because the pupil is never completely black. When I would do this in color, I would add blue to it, for instance, to give it some more depth. Right now we're working with just grayscale, so doing a bit of black, but I may add some dark gray on top of it just to make it a little less dark. Maybe make the pupil a little larger. We have a little highlight here as well, overlapping the bottom part, so I'm leaving that open for a little bit. Alright, so that's the pupil. 
And basically, this is all the black we need for now. There's not a lot of black in this. Maybe a little bit of black. Just below the top line of the eyeball. Leaving open a tiny little space in between the black areas. It is quite dark in here. Okay, so Denmark, Denmark is out of lockdown. In Taiwan, you still can't go to school. No, the schools here are not completely open either. All right, so this is all the black we need. Then I like to switch to my second darkest tone, which is this one. So this is 726, also by Stabilo. And fill in the areas that are slightly lighter. So here we have a little border, which I can fill in with that. Let's cover up the paper. So these first layers are just meant for covering up the paper. Make sure to get a tone everywhere and then you can start refining. So these are the base layers basically. And for the base layers I like to get started with a base tone that is a little darker than what I want um, the area to be eventually. And that sometimes means that I have to mix in several colors together to get in the right tone. We have a dark area around the pupil, which I'm filling in now. Keep looking at the reference. Where do I get my reference photos from? I like Pixabay mainly, so I mainly use Pixabay or I work with photographers or I use my own photos. So that's basically it. But most of my photos, this one as well, comes from Pixabay. So this is the darkest gray color that we have in the Stabilo line, but it's not as dark actually it's not a super dark tone so usually I have to mix it a little bit with a darker tone some black probably but let's just use it to cover up the paper a little bit so you can see here that we have a light area so that's where I want to place a little lighter tone So this is that ugly blocking in stage. First layers with um, pastels never look good. And let's read the comments. My brand of pencil is Stabilo Carbothello. Hi, Spades, Spesti, oh, I'm butchering that. I have no idea how I have to pronounce that. Okay. So then I'm going to switch to 724. So I'm, I like to work from dark to light. Put in my very darkest areas first. Put in my slightly lighter areas first. Then move to the lightest areas. So 724. A lighter gray and I can use this to fill in the light area on the eye around the dark pupil eye area just using small circular motions to fill this in I 
I should have zoomed in a little more with the camera. But I'm not sure if I can do that now. Ilona asked, is it hard to put the camera at the right position? No, it's not really, because I have a stand above my head that I just uh, place my webcam or my camera on. And it's already at the right position, so... No, I have my studio set up in a really easy, simple way. So I don't have to mess around with the position of my cameras. I can just place it and then start filming. Oh, I missed a question. Do I have a favorite breed of dog to draw? Hmm. I really like Springer Spaniels and we have some Dutch breeds, uh, breeds that I really like which are a lot like Springer Sp Spaniels Springer Spaniels, it's very hard to say I basically like all um, short breed, uh, short haired dogs I'm not so much a fan of curly hair Because that just takes a long time. Thank you, Mo Mohammed. I'm saying that right. Um, Alright. So, let's fill in a base for these highlights that we have. So we have that uh, long, thin one at the bottom. And then that large one at the top. So, let's fill in... A base layer of 722 so again that's slightly lighter than the one that I just used so this is not the lightest tone yet so for my highlights I also want to build those up so I'm not starting out with white I'm starting out with gray and then some of the highlights I'm going to lighten up with white but I don't think I'll need a lot of white so this is that highlight at the bottom going in between the black lines that I drew and it ends right there and then we have a little thingy the corner of the eye as well and some thingies in the inner corner and then we have the large one which I'm going to fill in with this color as well so I'm not looking at all the details that I see in there I'm just going to fill in the basic shape of it I don't need to press too hard I do want this edge of it, this bottom edge to be really nice and sharp and let's fill this in completely Sophie says, I'm painting a portrait of my sister's cat, but I can't get the eyes right. They look like completely different cats. Any tips on how I can try to fix the eyes? Yes, the eyes with cats are always very hard. Because it's really hard to get them exactly the same. The eyes are on the front of the head, so you have to get them symmetrical in order to make the cat look right. So... The only tip I can give for that is maybe use a grid if you haven't used a specific technique for the sketch or even trace your outlines. What you can also do is put your reference and put the drawing in the mirror. So look at them in the mirror and then you can most of the time see what's off. Because when you look at your drawing in the mirror, um, your brain sees it differently. So that way you can basically see uh, better what's off. 
sharpening my black pencil because I need to switch back to black for a minute to clean up some of the lines and to put in some more darkness in the iris as well going around the highlights here you can see this whole iris area is actually a little darker than what I put in so now I need to mix in some black to darken it up pupil needs to be the darkest clean up the shape of that so right now when I do my pastel drawings I like to not blend too much so I'm blending with the pencils and I'm trying to not rub too much with my hand because, because then you're rubbing out the details so I'm doing the blending mainly by layering just using light pressure on the pencil and I'm just going to darken this up a little Hannah says I'm struggling with long fur on a long long-ish fired dog I'm not sure what that what that is long hair is often difficult to draw because you don't have to draw every hair look at the hairs like clumps look at the lights and shadows in between the, the, the clumps of hair so instead of drawing all the hairs you have to draw the lights and the shadows so that's the most important thing for drawing long fur or long hair Right, just filling this in. I'm taking my time for it. Sometimes I have to blow off all the excess dust that comes off the pencil. Let's darken up here and there. I'm also going to darken up the very edge of the eye, just above that highlight to put in some more 3D effect in the eye. I'm just working with light pressure, circular motions, taking it inwards. And in the inner corner as well. So definitely let me know what kind of streams you like. So if you like these things, so doing a live demonstration from start to finish, or just if you want me to work on another piece, not necessarily a lesson, but another piece and just do a chat. So I'd love to know what you guys prefer for the next time. It is nice though to do a full piece from start to finish. Maybe I can also do a larger piece and then divide it over multiple streams instead of just a small thing. So now I'm just going to model, add more dark where I want more dark. I feel like this top area needs a bit more dark. Pastel is very forgiving, so not everything has to be right right away. You can keep on changing things till you're happy with it. So I can do a little bit of blending now. I just tap with my finger to smooth out the edges. Thank you, Brave Doll Flug. Just 
just as it is now, I can see a bird with a beak, but its body pattern is an eye. So I see an abstract, abstract, abstract version of what is there now. Oh, I can't see a bird in it. No, I definitely don't see a bird. Charlotte says, I would love if you could do a full piece and maybe use a couple of live streams on it. Yes, yes. so then I'd have to do more live streams in a month. So I'll see, I'll see how many I can do in a month. Right now, all the pieces I do are for Patreon. So all the pieces I make, all the drawings I make, I film for the Patreon students. But maybe it would be nice to just do some pieces as well, just for myself and for the stream. Okay, so now I have a little more contrast in the drawing. I have my pupil, which is nice and dark, then this top area, which is nice and dark, and there's some depth in the iris now. So that's good. Let's also do this um, bottom eyelid because it has quite a dark edge so I can fill that in a little with black as well but I'm not pressing too much and then at the top as well so this is going quite fast I might be able to do a piece of fur around it as well Okay, a larger piece of, um, over multiple streams would be great. All right, so then I can also do some color work because I really like working in color. So in um, 2018, I did a live stream every day in December. And in that period, I also did some very nice pieces in the live streams, which I really enjoyed. So far, I haven't been able to redo that. Um, that advent stream thing. I hope to do it this year. Again, daily live streams in December. I'm not sure if I will manage. So this is just the fur that is going from the eyelid into the fur area. So I'm just mapping that direction out a little bit. So look at the fur. It goes like this around the eye, around the cheek, and then outwards um, Lily asks what are your brands of paper so this is Claire Fontaine pastel Mat. that's the only paper I use for pastel drawing because it's my very favorite paper and then for color pencil I also use Canson sometimes Okay, so now I've also mapped out that eyelid area. We can give it a nice base tone. So for the base, I would go in with dark gray. So that's 726. Then I'm still able to also add my light details on there and darken up here and there as well with black. So this is a good base tone for that eyelid. Just fill it in with circular motions. Thank you, TA. Um, Brave Da Vlog says, which are your favorite artists? Mine are Dali, Monet, Rembrandt and Vet Vetriano. I don't know that one. Yeah, I don't have many like favorite artists from the past. I actually never studied any artist from, you know, before our generation, so I have no idea. Of course, I know Rembrandt. I really like Rembrandt, but my favorite artists at the moment, which are modern ar artists, so those are um, Aaron Blaze. I really like Aaron Blaze. 
also I've been really looking a lot at Andrew Tischler's work which is an oil painter because I've been getting into oil painting so I've been starting to do that and then I also love Lisa from Lockery Fine Art I've been following her for, for, for many years I also love her work and then when it comes to pastel work I really love I hope I'm seeing that right Patricia Otero, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but she does really nice pastel pet portraits, like large, very large pieces. And I love Emma Colbert as well. Right, so filling that in with a light layer. I'm not pressing too much. Then we have this weird gooey area in the corner, which I'm also giving a base layer of this color. We can then do the highlights. What do I like about oil painting? I really like the look of it. I really like how how vibrant the colors look and how soft you can make um, something look. So I really love the way you can smudge the colors and get really soft and smooth blends. So it looks a lot like pestle drying, I feel. I really like oil, oil paints. I also like acrylics, but it just feels... I like the look of it a little less. It looks a little flatter, although it does depend on the artist, of course. Oh, I also love Lina Danya and Happy D. I really like their oil paintings. Um, let's see if I missed any comments. Oh, no, no, no. Charlotte says, you should check out Degas of D or Degas. I'm not sure how to say that. Pastels. He was one of the impressionists, but he did some amazing drawings. Okay, I'm sh I should look that up because I don't know him. All right, so that's a base layer for the lid. But I need to create a smoother transition between this very dark shadow and then the eyelid. The eyelid needs to have more shadow. So I'm going back to my black and with a very light pressure and small circular motions I'm going to smooth out this edge. Right, so this can have a bit more shadow. This inner corner can have some more shadow as well. And if I would do this in color, I would add many blue tones and also many purple tones. I can see a lot of purplish hues in the eyelid. For next stream, I'll definitely do something in color. Now I'm going to refine a little bit, adding the more subtle shadows. So I'm curious who your favorite artists are. Who are your favorite artists to follow at the moment? going to separate this highlight because it's not just one big line there's some disruptions in it 
maybe darken up this line below it a little bit as well. So now I have to be a little bit more careful with where I place my lines. Um, oh, thank you, Jenna. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, all right. Um, do I ever use deviant art? I have been on deviant art for many years, but the past years I've never used it again anymore. I mean, I don't really like it that much anymore. I haven't logged in for ages. Now I'm focused more on Instagram. I feel like my uh, my audience is not really on deviant art anymore. But I liked it when I got started with art. I'm going to darken up the edge of the eyelid as well. Just place a little bit more shadow below it. Which creates more of a 3D effect. Still working in circular motions. Oh, Siren. I know Siren. She's Dutch as well. Probably one of the most known artists in the Netherlands at the moment. Or at least the one with the most followers. Oh, thank you, Hannah. Have I ever thought about asking Mark Crilly to collaborate? Uh, no, I haven't. I have followed him for a long time, but at the moment I don't think I follow him anymore. But he's really good, but he's just, um, he's too famous for me. <laughs> Alright, let's smudge this out a little. Oh yeah, Jason Morgan. I totally forgot to mention Jason Morgan. He does really good pastels. Being a little more subtle with how much black I add. So this is really the refining stage. Tiny bit here. So if you want to get started with pastel pencils or with pastels, this is a really good way to start. Because you don't have to worry about any color. You can just focus on the gray scale and the contrast and the values and the shapes. That's already quite a lot if you're getting started with drawing. But it takes away, it takes away the struggle of mixing colors if you're not used to that. And then when you feel like you have the, you get the hang of the medium, then you can start working with colors. Um, Amka says, if you had to choose pastels or colored pencils, that's really hard because I really like both and I can't do either one of them. So I can't only work in colored pencils because I get I get burnt out on it if you, if I work with colored pencil too much because it takes so long. But I can't do only pastels because I love how detailed you can go with color pencils. So I cannot choose. I think if I have to choose, I choose colored pencil 
because you can use color pencil on pastel mat and get some what the same effect as with pen pastels but I like the combination of them and I really like switching because it keeps me interested in both the mediums I'll be starting a new color pencil drawing soon also I have some new videos coming up because I've finished some new pieces which I still have to turn into YouTube videos okay so now you can see that the eyelid has a nice texture to it it has some nice contrast now it looks more like skin and I have to do some work on this highlight because you can see lots of lines and shapes in the highlights so I can do that with black as well and just draw in all the lines that I see so I have to do this quite carefully draw in a line so this is just the reflection from his environment so he is somewhere I'm not sure where he is but I see trees in the reflections and what's happening in the space or in the area where the dog is it is reflecting into the eyes so I basically have to recreate exactly what I see in there hi Kenneth I think I'm missing a lot of um, comments. My favorite artist is Edward Hopper. He does a lot of portraits detailing mundane everyday life, but he makes it interesting. I don't know him either. I should look him up. Oh, bye, Brave Dove Vlog. Maybe I'll see you in the next stream. Let's see, let's scroll up, see if I missed any comments. <laughs> oh, how do I get started with arts? So uh, how you get started is mainly pick a medium that interests you and pick a subject that interests you and then start practicing so that's basically it I never got any lessons so I just started to draw when I was very young and I've always been drawing but eventually when you want to get better you have to practice every day and also find a material and a medium that you enjoy using. For me that is pastels and color pencil but it took me a long time before I figured that out. Alright so we're getting somewhere. Let's give it another half an hour. Do some details. You can also see the eyelashes reflecting but now I need to sharpen because otherwise I can't get those details in using my color grip sharpener thank you Marilia yep it's a nice little eye you can get so fast uh, such fast results with pastels so now I have to be a little concentrated so I'm taking my pencil and I'm guiding it across the paper like this in the direction I want the hairs to go so these are the lashes reflecting in the eye it's putting down some very small lines then I also see some other shapes of which I'm not sure what they are I see a tree this looks something like a tree
And then I see some lines here. <laughs> Sorry, I had to blow away the dust. I'm blowing in my microphone. Right, so that gives the eye and the highlight a lot more life. And I also want to do a bit more subtle color changes on the highlight. So you can see that the highlight looks blue if you look really closely at the photo. The highlight is actually bl um, blue, it's not white. So I'm going to get some of my 724 gray and tone the top of the highlight slightly. Just going to give it a little more depth. In color, I would choose blue. Now I don't have any color, so I'm choosing gray. Slightly toning that. And because I've not added any of my white and very light gray, I can now use those to do some very bright highlights and really bring more life into the eye. Maybe I should go to white right away. So this is 110. I think I need to go lighter. Some subtle tone changes. Let's go to white. So this is the white Pit Pastel Faber Castell. But you can use any brand you like. And brighten up mainly the bottom. That's the lightest. Making sure to keep that bottom line very sharp. I don't want to do any blending to this, so I'm not going in with my finger. I want to keep it as it is, because otherwise you're smudging out all the details. Now it really looks like a reflection, so that's nice. And I can also use the white to brighten up this bottom highlight. This high contrast, so this high difference between light and dark is going to make the eye look wet. So that's quite important. Now we know exactly where to place all these. Let's look at the comments. Na, na, na. Right, have I missed any questions? Thank you, MG Best Arts. Thank you, Ia's love. A lot of compliments. I can brighten up this top line slightly. So now I have so much space to do all kinds of little details. And you can add um, this light, this white, on top of the dark surface if you make sure to not push too much with the first layers. So if you push a lot during the layering, it becomes way harder to add this white on top. But if you make sure to not push, just let the pencil glide over the paper. Then you can very easily add in these details, these highlights. You can find a lot more of these tutorials over on Patreon. I think there's a link in the description. Also lots of color projects, a lot of long ones, but also shorter ones. So definitely have a look if you're interested in following along with all these lessons. So this is a really fun stage. I do want to give a little more detail to this lighter ring within the iris. So I'm going to get my 110 and just brighten up 
slightly. Placing in some lines to create some texture. Now you can basically make it as detailed as you want. Okay. So then we are basically done with the eye, but I do want to put in some more detail on the skin as well. And I also see some lashes, which I also want to add. So let's do that first. Let's add these little lashes overlapping the eye a little bit. So I'm going to get the 724, make sure it's very sharp. Thank you, Clara. Hi, Applejack. Better late than never. And I'm going to place in these very light lashes. So when drawing lashes, both on animals or on humans, make sure to vary in the length of them. Don't make them all go in the exact same direction because that will look very stiff. Make some a bit thinner. Some are going more down, some are going up more. These are very short, so I don't need much of them. Many of them, I mean. English is very hard when you're trying to draw and read and watch at the same time. Making some of these a little lighter with the 110, just the very base of them. And then I'm going to take 722 and create some of the skin texture on the bottom eyelid. So I'm just tapping, just tapping along this top edge, which creates some of the pores in there. I'm liking how this looks so far. It's just a little study, but it's really fun to do. Very relaxing as well. Also here in the inner corner, just tapping in some of that gray. Because we started with a darker underlayer, it's quite easy to add in those light details. If you start off too light, it becomes really hard to add any detail because you don't have enough space left for them. If the dots look too harsh, just tap with your finger to blend them in. Thank you, Lucia. So let me know in the comments what your favorite material to work in is. Do you work with pastels as well or with something else? Or maybe you don't draw at all. Let me know in the comments. Maybe just you just like to watch someone draw. Would you like to see another piece of fur, like a little area of fur around the eye, or should I leave it like this and just do Q&A? So we have a little wet area here, and just looking at the shapes that I see, I'm not going to make this super detailed. Oh, thank you, Clara. 
I like to work in charcoal and colored pencil. Charcoal is really nice too. I've just done a charcoal drawing that will be on YouTube, I think, Thursday? Alright, I'll do a little bit of fur. So the fur is a bit beigey looking, a bit orangey, but actually the fur around the eyes is quite light. But also for light fur, I like to start off slightly darker so that I can then add my lighter details on top. So now I have to pick a gray that is suitable as a base layer. I think I'm going for I'm going for 722. And first put in a base. I'm already going in the right direction. So look at the direction of the fur. It's going around the eye like that. Might have, I might have to darken it up slightly. This is just to get a feel of the fur, know where it's going. You have that transition from the skin into the fur. You can see that the skin is darker than the fur. Going like that. Let's do a little higher. So I'd like to start with very light layers. Some artists like to start by really covering up the paper right away. Start with a thick layer, but I like to work with light layers so that I have more space, more room for detail. So that's the top and the bottom is going like that. Okay, so Michelle says, I love pastel pencils, watercolor and charcoal. Really nice. I've tried watercolors, but I'm not good at them. They're really not suitable for my perfectionistic way of working. I have to take down this piece of skin, take it down a little further. It's quite easy to make corrections with that, with colored or with a pastel pencil. Color pencil is a little bit more difficult because it's really hard to make corrections. Right, so this is the fur that I'm going to add. but you can see that the paper's not filled up yet. I'm going to add a slightly bit of 724, just to cover up the paper a bit more. Already create a little bit of value in the fur. In color, I would build this up actually with pinks, also some beiges, but mainly pink, because I do see a lot of pink in there. A 
Brandy says, is this supposed to be a monotone um, piece? Yes. This is just a grayscale pastel drawing. But I've already decided to do color work in my next live stream and maybe to um, do a larger piece or a more detailed piece and then divide it over two or three live streams. Okay, so that's a little base for the fur. I'm going to blend this in a little bit. Not too much. Jordan says, how do I get started? Do you mean how to get started with pastel pencils? Or with drawing in general? Let me know. I'm going to switch to my 726, the darkest gray color. And work a little bit more on this transition from the skin into the fur. So I'm going into the skin then draw into the fur as well like that quick motions also at the bottom make sure to have a little variation in the strokes if there's too much uniformity in your lines it will look very stiff and actually there's a darker area right here in the corner Okay, so how do you get started with pastels? Then I would say this way. So get white and then a few tones of gray. Make sure to have both light gray and a few darker grays. And pastel matte. I would recommend pastel matte because it's really nice for pastels. The cheaper pastel papers don't give you that same result. I really like the look of this. And then do some black and white pieces. And then you can, if you are um, familiar with how it works, if you like the look of it, then you can start getting some colors. But I think this is a really good way because you don't have to get many colors. It doesn't cost, it costs much money to get started this way. So starting monochrome. It's basically for any medium a really good way to start. So for colored pencil I would say the same. Get a sketchbook like a Strathmore tone gray or a tone surface. Get a black and white colored pencil and just do some drawings with that with just black and white. That's how I started. So that takes away you know the, the anxiety of starting to work with colors if you've never worked with that before and it just gives you some time to get used to the material let's do gray scales so i'm doing a few darker strokes with black now increasing the deepness of the fur especially in those transitions from the skin into the fur my voice is starting to quit on me just increasing the shadow in the corner as well so this is where the two streams of fur come together, creates a shadow here, which is really nice to draw in. You can make it as detailed as you want. Hmm. 
And I could even create a few shadows in the fur to also increase the depth in there. So just shadow up in between the hairs. It's very important to look at the contrast in the fur instead of trying to draw every single hair because most of the time that's not really necessary. Just looking at the lights and the darks. And again, if you want to learn really detailed pastel drawing, also colored pastel drawing, have a look at my Patreon. I have tons of different projects on there for $4. And I also have longer, larger pieces for $7 a month. So the link for that is in the description. And colored pencil as well. So if you want to learn colored pencil, you can also check on there. Okay, so then finally I can take my 110 and lighten up some of the hairs. So this is really fun. So now I can really create that fur by bringing some of these hairs to the surface. Now I have to make sure to not go into my eye with my hand. So now I look at the length of the hairs. So these hairs are quite short, so I also draw quite short lines. And the bottom as well. Just brightening up some of these hairs. Not too much because that's going to diminish the effect. I just want to highlight some. And then this is just a study, so I could call it finished now. <laughs> Rachel asks, where did I learn to art? Um, at home, I never had any lessons, so I just taught myself by practicing a lot for many years and I could learn way more I think I'm definitely not done learning I think you're never done learning when learning to draw yeah I'm enjoying the live stream too yeah I hope to do it um, multiple times a month, but I can't say how much or how often. Maybe I should just do it next week again. Let's see if I can do one next week. Um, let's keep them on the Tuesdays. So let's just try to do another one next Tuesday because I really like it. Then I'll probably do something in color. Just starting again from scratch. Going to highlight some of these skin pores with the 210. Then I'm calling it finished. I didn't expect so many people to watch. So that's a nice surprise. More people watched than I ex 
than I um, anticipated, so that's nice. Okay, so that's it. If you have any more questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will wrap it up. And this one, this video will just be on my channel. So if you want to follow along another time, if you want to get your pencils and uh, take your time to do this, you can watch this over and over. So it will just be on my channel if you want to follow this one again. So I hope you liked it. It's just a nice, very nice beginner pastel lesson. Thank you, Lucia. Eos Love, I hope I'm saying that right, asks, what is the hardest thing you have ever drawn? I'm not sure. I can't remember. I'm not sure, actually. I think every drawing is hard. I think I should go for a colored pen. Oh, I've done um, a deer in colored pencil, including the background. So I also put in the background, which is very hard and it took a long time. So I think that one is the hardest one, but it's not on YouTube. It was a commission. It turned out good though. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, I hope you guys um, found it helpful in any way. I like how it turned out. So I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to be in bed. And then you'll see when the next live stream will be. I will announce it a few days in advance. I hope to manage next Tuesday. So keep an eye out for my channel. Also for the next video, it will be up on Thursday. And make sure to join me on Patreon if you want to follow more lessons, a lot more lessons. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Now I have to figure out how to turn this off. Oh right, I'm seeing it.